Okay. Um, last summer, medical experts were raising doubts and concerns about uh, all these governments around the world pushing vaccines on children. We were raising these concerns here on this show. You know, why are these governments going to such great lengths? And why are the media falling in line with these governments pushing this idea that children should be getting these really untested vaccines. I mean, we can say, you know, you can say that they've been tested on millions of people, but yet you need years of research and data before you authorize these, these vaccines. Why are these governments pushing these vaccines on perfectly healthy children that don't have any comorbidities? Medical experts at the time um, suggested that this, this draconian push for these vaccines was problematic, was going to cause problems for children. So much so that Dr. Robert Malone, of course, you'll remember, who the inventor of the technology used in the mRNA vaccines, said this. He actually said at the time, these vaccines force your, bo your child's body to make toxic spike proteins. And these proteins, he said, often cause permanent damage in children's critical organs, such as the brain, the nervous system, heart and reproductive systems. A video that he was talking about at the time kind of went viral then a lot of people blocked it, took it down. You weren't allowed to talk about it. Uh, where he talked about the administration, the administration of mRNA vaccines to children, he claimed that this toxic spike protein from the injection frequently affects vital organs, specifically the brain, specifically the heart, and reproductive systems. But don't pay attention to Robert Malone. Then there was, of course, this big push by mainstream media to discredit this guy wipe away anything that he had to say from the internet. Uh, at the time, the Australian government um, and state-run media went to great lengths to discredit um, Dr. Malone. Do you remember this? So let me see if I can pull this up here on the screen. Where did I put that? Did I put that? I don't have that in front of me. Uh, here is the child vaccination rates, right? So here is the Associated Press from Australia, the Australian Associated Press did a fact check of what Dr. Robert Malone had to say, right? What was claimed spike proteins from COVID-19 often cause permanent damage to children's vital organs. That's Dr. Robert Malone and others. He's not the only one, by the way. Like he was just one that was like kind of popular in all of this, right? Well, Associated Press of Australia got their hands on this story. They said, our verdict, false. There's no evidence the vaccine spike proteins cause any common and serious side effects. Okay. Interesting that they're fact check. So who's fact checking, by the way? Let me just do that part of the story before we dive a little deeper here. If you dive into who is the Associated Press of Australia, who are these fact checkers? Well, I looked into it and we went to who their board members are. Who are their board members, right? Here's just one example. Rania Alkadami. Al okay, she's one of their board members. This is supposed to be fair and impartial, right? If you look at their website, this is trusted, accurate, impartial. Oh, okay. So who's she? Oh, she was a previous press secretary to the Australian Foreign Minister's Office. I mean, on and on. You go through the board members, ties to government, ties to different major organizations within uh, that, that would benefit from this type of narrative uh, being discredited in public. Of course, that's the case. That's what they always do, right? It's all money driven. Well, now we have troubling new data out this morning that shows that there's been a rash of heart attacks and deaths in Australia, and what is what is the media what is the media trying to do there? Here's exactly how the media in Australia is trying to paint this story, ignoring what is actually happening with the vaccines. But they're telling us now that it's because of a genetic defect. The, all of these kids are suddenly having heart attacks; they just have a genetic defect, and adults too. Heart attacks can happen to healthy, younger Australians who have none of the usual risk factors for disease. Now new research has uncovered mutations in the genes which can compromise the arteries in the heart. When Liza Stern had a heart attack at the age of 41, she was very lucky to pull through. Lots of CPR for apparently over 40 minutes, um, seven shocks of the defibrillator. The mother of two didn't experience chest pain. The warning signs were more obscure. I started to feel faint, thought I might faint, um, broke out in a sweat, a bit cold and clammy. Liza had a tear in one of her arteries, which led to a clot. Hmm. The condition called spontaneous coronary artery dissection 
causes about a quarter of heart attacks in women under the age of 50. It's not as common in men, but they're not immune. We just had a case from a patient down in Melbourne who was less than 40, who just had a severe heart attack. Its causes are largely unknown, although a recent US study identified genetic mutations that weaken the collagen, which make the heart's arteries strong and stable. This study is still early. It's a very small number of patients, and I think it really needs to be replicated. The Victor Chang Institute is casting the net wider, taking samples from a register of 400 patients and using sophisticated techniques to pinpoint other mutations. We've got some very interesting families now where we think we've absolutely nailed the gene that's causing it. Oh, Experts say finding an underlying cause of the condition is crucial as up to 30% of cases are likely to have another heart attack. If we can find that there what? is this genetic link, um, I just think, you know, knowledge is power. Gabriella Rogers, Nine News. Yes. For breaking news, For breaking turn news. to Peter Overton, nightly at six. That's who I do. I turn to Peter Overton at nightly at six to get my news. Not one mention in this entire news report about her having had the vaccine. Did multiple she? shots. Oh, yes. Multiple shots. How do you know that? According to the data, according to the news reports that I've been reading on this and others. So all of these things have a, they all have something in common, which is that they all had the vaccine. Remarkable. Well, Peter McCullough. Peter McCullough was talking a lot about that. And it, what was funny mm -hmm. is like after he was on Joe Rogan and they started to, to draw the parallels to that, uh, to the myocarditis uh, specifically in kids and, uh, you know, like soccer players are just falling over left and right. Um, Pfizer started putting out articles saying that it was actually COVID that led to the heart issues um, and, oh, and trying okay. to okay. spin it so that it wasn't, you know, don't look at the vax. It's not that. It's well, here's Dr. Peter McCullough on this data. So he analyzing what's going on in Australia and why these people, because that government has been very, you know, been pushing very, very hard to make sure that that country that they've pushing. And in fact, when this rash of heart attacks is happening across in young people in Australia, still pushing them for a fourth shot. Go get a fourth additional shot now on top of all of this. So Peter McCullough had this to say, I would break this up because he is diving deep into this data specifically on these spike proteins, which he says are causing these heart attacks. Heart attacks can Oops, happen sorry. to healthy young... Blood clots in the body are a bad thing. Yeah. The spike protein is incontrovertible. It causes blood clotting. Every single study shows that. It damages endothelial cells. Uh, I yeah. published papers with Zhang and colleagues demonstrating the spike protein damages endothelial cells. People have the hardest time figuring out, is it the virus? With the spike protein or the spike protein alone, can it damage things? And once we started getting the preclinical papers saying, forget the nucleocapsid, just the spike protein alone, when we give that in models, does it damage cells? Does it cause blood clotting? Right. Does it damage the heart? The answer is yes. Yeah, it does. But okay, can we make any inference about people who may have these arterial tears who then, like a, a blood clot will further tear what was already prone, or, right? Or cause the tear itself. Here's Peter McCullough going deeper into that. Radio, I said, Bruce, I, I need to know because he has a registry of people who've taken the vaccine and he has the ability to detect the spike protein. And I asked Bruce the question and it's in the recording. Bruce, what are you seeing? He's saying, I'm seeing the S1 and the S2 segment in vaccinated people for as long as I can observe them months. And I asked him, Bruce, how long is this spike protein going to stay in the body? His best estimate is certainly more than a year. Now, why is that a problem? Because I think your average person is listening right now thinking, well, I want my antibodies to last forever. We're not talking about the antibodies. So we're, why is it? We're talking about the dangerous spike protein. And the question is, where is it in the body? So when the autopsy studies broke of vaccinated people who had taken the uh, vaccine and they short died a few months afterwards, they came from Vienna and they came from Germany. The answer was it's everywhere. The spike protein is in the brain. It's in the heart. It's uh, yeah, so in we're not talking the organ. antibodies to the spike protein. We are talking, talking about, about the uh, weapon of the virus, the dangerous inflammatory cytokine inspiring you know, blood clot, blood from clotting body. It's, it's the most it's all over the body, right? All over the body, all over the body, these blood clots, the tearing, the ripping of arteries that and he even called it a weapon. I mean, what else is it? Right. It's like literally well, going also, through the body. 
a lot a of people don't realize that that spike version of the virus. Yeah. Yes, that spike protein is synthetic because the virus itself, a lot of evidence points to being man-made. So the spike was was synthetic in the virus itself, meaning they had to create the spike the the synthetic in the virus or in the vaccine too. So you're getting right. a foreign thing into your body that is not even it's man-made. But what we're looking at here is the the media presenting correlation without actually telling you it's correlated right but you yeah, cannot we don't know yet what we don't know is its causality but we do know a correlation that the media is omitting yeah they're i mean they're well absolutely admitting that these people that these perfectly health omitting that these per, per, uh, perfectly healthy teenagers and otherwise because you can get the shot there from up to five years old up to 11 years old and it's pushed by the government that the state narrative, the government narrative, is that th this has nothing to do with the vaccine. We're not even going to talk about it. If you mention it, you'll be blocked and banned and, and, and taken down. I've gotten a lot of messages from Australian viewers recently because you, you've been telling me, oh, my God, our government, like, what are they doing here? The press here is just awful. And what they're doing is hiding the truth in that country quite extensively. And so they're, they're omitting on purpose the fact that that woman who had a heart attack had, a, had the vaccine, multiple vaccines. They didn't mention at all. Yeah. Uh, and then the list goes on and on. But they are saying, they're trying to draw some distinction that it's a genetic mutation, that there's a lack of uh, collagen in some of these arterial walls among these individuals in these autopsy reports. That would cause a tear in the yeah, arteries. It's, 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 well, it's ridiculous. Uh, and the data is overwhelming now, showing that all well, of these people—you don't know that it's ridiculous. You don't well, know that you don't know the the pathology of this actual condition, but you know that it, there's correlation. Well, I'm saying in the in the autopsy reports, I mean, there's correlation, and there's I mean, the autopsy reports is Peter Mac, Dr. Peter McCullough specifically talking about is they but all have we, the same. Thing we in also common. cannot. You can't observe what this person's collagen levels were pre-vaccine. No, but the point is that when f this person gets a Pfizer vaccine and Pfizer a few weeks ago, finally, we got access to those documents from Pfizer that showed that these were side effects from the vaccine, but they were kept hidden and not allowed to be presented to people. Mm -hmm. If someone knew that they had some sort of a pre-existing right. condition. Right, that is, at least was admitted by Pfizer that these, that certain. Only after a court order. Right. I mean, you can defend all Pfizer all you want on this or these guys, but I'm saying that this information I'm not, is I'm being I'm not defending. Held. I just want to be careful with correlation versus causality. Because well, explain I, that to our audience. What are you saying? What, because are, you, what are you troubled by? Because if people by? who were vaccinated then started to have these heart attacks, right? You don't know that the vaccine actually caused it. We just can't, you can't say, unless you can actually replicate it in a lab, you can say it's correlated, but you don't know necessarily if it's, causality and you don't we don't know the pre-existing conditions of these people who had it we're not scientists so it's not for us as news reporters to say no no but what he's saying this happened. Yes. Well, what peter mccullough is saying is that what these news reports are using is two months of a study yes when in fact the spike protein is showing up for 15 months or longer so how their data is flawed, like their data set is flawed. And these studies that they're using to try to discredit these people yes. are flawed. And the media should be saying that like these people we spoke to did have a COVID vaccine. That's the only change. And like right. when you're, you know, when you when you go to the allergist and you're like, all of a sudden I'm breaking out in rash. They're like, did you change your shampoo? Did you do this? Did you do this? Like you should be asking what did you, what have you done differently yeah i had a covid vaccine right, right. so at, at the very least we should get the questions the, i think what we're highlighting here what we try to highlight often is that a lot of times any any leading question that may lead to an answer that the covid vaccine is not safe is tamped down yeah it's hidden you're not allowed to ask that question our point is that all of this as she even says in that piece which was laughable knowledge is power Knowledge is power. Yes, what, it is power. What do you do with that knowledge that there may be a tear in my artery, right? Like, Well, no, no, that's not what I don't think what she's saying. What I'm saying is that if we knew that these things would cause tears in a perfectly normal human being. Right. Or that it would cause a heart attack and kill children. But what she's saying, knowledge is power. What, like, I don't know. You may have this condition and not know it. 
Right. So you knowledge, have lack of knowledge and lack of power. Like we want to know is more. Is what she's saying. We want to know more about your. Uh, uh, we want to know more about what uh, what genetic condition you have. Here that here's that clip again. It's causing it. Experts say finding an underlying cause of the condition is crucial, as up to thirty percent of cases are likely to have another heart attack. If we can find that there is this genetic link, um, I just think you know knowledge is power. Gabriel. Not gen oh, okay. genetically the to what? Say that. But they don't say anywhere in this piece at all. Riella Rogers, nine new. There's no mention. Of, like, what is she talking about? She's inferring that you this can have genetic a genetic link. test. Yeah, they're just doing she, everything in their power not to tie it back to the vaccine. Exactly, and hiding as much as they can. But I think Peter McCullough, listen to the data. Listen to the look at the autopsy reports. Look at the data that we presented to you here. Again, I, I'm not. We we got vaccinated. Right. I got the J and J jot jab, which, by the way, there's no mention of that shot anywhere anymore. Like, I feel like at what point in my, my body is like something going to start to like pop off or something. Well, and somebody know? just while you're on that t subject, we got a super chat for 20 bucks. What in the world convinced you, Clayton and Natalie, to get back? So you might as well answer that now. Well, we've we talked about it here on the show quite a bit. I think a year ago when we got vaccinated, it was, hey, we were told, right, we we believed at the time that, it, you know, hey, if we if we got vaccinated, it would stop the spread and it would. It would, it would help us, uh, you know, our kids go to school. So we didn't want our teachers at the schools getting infected. If there was somebody with comorbidities that might get the, you know, get the virus because we had it or something and we could pass it. So we wanted to stop it, right? We were told at the time. Yes. You know, that's what we're hearing from our, our government doctors, right? It's going to stop the spread. And we got it two months later. We, we, we got COVID. Yeah, we got COVID two months later after we got the shot. So... Um, that's why we did it. And we live a bunch. There's a couple of older individuals that live near us on our street and uh, great people. And we didn't want, you know, those people to be if we didn't want to be the people that like killed old people, you know, like that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, the, this idea that you could weaponize your body, you know, so that you couldn't go to the grocery store because um, that's one of my biggest regrets is living that way and watching like old people, you know, yeah. load their groceries and thinking I better not get near them. You know, I don't know if I sort of believed the line about it, but I did believe that my children would live in a different world if we got to a certain percentage of vaccination that the government would allow them to have a different life. Um, really, it was just about that. Like if, you know, 80% of our community is vaccinated, maybe they don't make kids wear masks. Like that was really it for me. Yeah. I just wanted to be a part of that population so that my kids could have a better uh, n more normal childhood because the, of everything they've been robbed of. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a membership program for the price of a cup of coffee once a month. You can support independent journalism just by going to morninginvest.com slash join. You get access to exclusive videos, plus the ability to join and chat with us live. We really appreciate your subscription and you are supporting independent journalism.